forums. So you log on there, the people are talking about, okay, you know, the oil is getting, you know, up. So dollar is also getting up. So in 30 days, dollar price go up. So we buy a future contract right now. So we buy from, from the seller at lower price because we know after 30 days price will go up and then we buy from seller and sell it to the market where we can earn a profit. So in this situation, you can earn profit. We call this capitalization through speculation, right? So currency future contracts often sold by speculators who expect that the spot rate of the currency will be less. So similarly, if you expect in future, the currency will go down, right? So you enter into a contract to sell the currency at higher price at that time, right? Similarly, so that you, at lower price, you buy from the market and sell at higher price because this is a contract and both parties should honor. So in your analysis, you realize that, okay, after 30 days, the, you know, right now, the price of Australian dollar is, for example, 0 0.50. That is a spot rate. 0 0.50, let me just write it down here. 0 0.50 dollar over Australian dollar. And you expect that your expectation, your analysis, you expect that the price would be 0.45 dollar in future. Right? So for example, this is the spot rate. So you enter into a contract, you enter into a contract of future rate and you see that the future rate is that I'm going to sell you at 0 0.48, 0 0.48. That is future rate. Right? So what happened at the expiration? If you are speculator, if your expectations are true and the spot rate at that time at after 30 days indeed is 0.45 then you can earn profit you buy from the market at the australian dollar at 0.45 and you sell your other party to whom you have a contract at 0.48 and you can earn 0 0.03 dollar per australian dollar if the reference price point is 100,000, the profit will be lower. If the reference point is $1 million, your profit will be higher. So it depends on your reference point, right? Everybody understand that? So it just depends on your motive, whether you want to manage your risk or whether you want to play with the risk. So what does the speculator means? they believe in high risk high return what if their calculation expectation go wrong and the uh, you know at the spot rate at would be 0.54 then they will lose because they had they promised they would sell you at 0.48 but in the market the value is 0.54 so they will buy at higher price and sell at lower price and earning a huge loss so that's why High risk, high return, right? High risk, high loss as well. So the example for speculation. So assume that as of April 4, a future contract specifying 500,000 Mexican pesos and a June settlement date is priced at 0 0.09 dollar, right? On April 4, speculators who expect that PISO will decline. So what is their strategy? They will sell the PISO contract, future contract. So assume that on June 17, the spot rate of the PISO is 0 0.08. So the transaction gonna be, so we are not basically, because we are talking about futures, future does have the margin requirement. So we are just omitting this kind of margin requirement and just be in a very simple format. So you enter into a contract for April 4 to June 17, in which you sell 
your PISO at 0 0.09, right? And your expectation was that that PISO will go down. And at June 17, PISO went down to 0 0.08, right? So you got profit. Yes, you got profit. Profit is 0 0.01 multiplied by 500,000. The reference point answer would be 5,000. So you sell the 500,000 pesos at $45,000 and you buy the pesos from the market at 40,000. So 500,000, uh, $5,000 uh, $5, is your profit at settlement deal. Understand? So you can do so, different scenarios. So, if, if he does this, he can ensure it's like he made the contract before to actually have the pieces. For example, what you just say is like yes. he made it in the future before actually have the pieces. If the, the, the pieces uh, decrease, I don't know how he can sell it, but if it's increased, if we just buy it and sell it. Even if you don't have the piece right now, you can still buy from the market. If you have it, then just you can wait till June 17 and sell it. That's it. So buying or keeping, sorry, keeping the pesos or buying at the time, it doesn't matter. Right? If you have the, the, uh, the pesos right now, so it's okay because you can wait till June 17. If you don't have, even then, you don't need to worry about that. You just buy from the market. That's it. 500,000 pesos is not a big deal. If it would be a 50 billion pesos, then there is a liquidity problem. Maybe on June settlement date, you cannot find the 50 billion uh, uh, pesos. For that, you need, to have, you need to have a special arrangement. Otherwise, you cannot fulfill your transaction and you will be penalized. Heavy fine going to be there because you dishonor your contract. But 500,000 is small. It doesn't matter. You can buy at the spot on the market or if you have it through your bank account, you can transfer that. Right, Florian? Yeah, and I, I would like to know the rate of change at the second or on a day, is it lower than on a week or it's really dependent? It's like luck. Can you repeat your question? For example, the, the, the rate of change, it can increase or decrease. If it's on the same day, the rate, the ratio can be like... Even in, even in second, the rate can be increased or decreased. We don't know. But the ratio is like how, how far it will increase or decrease. It depends on the date. For example, if it's next week, maybe it's a, a, a bigger change that next second. That is your analysis. We are, we are not predicting the exchange rate right now. We are just right now predicting that it will be go down. So how they come up with their expectation, whether it will decrease. So there are a lot of calculation, financial engineering, a lot of formulas over there. We will talk about some of them, some of the theories uh, later this chapter. I think next chapter we will talk about how they come up with this expectation, whether in future it will go down or it will go up. So I'm just going to give you a taste. So recall your discussion. If there is an inflation differential, if there is an interest differential, so you know that in future the rate going to rise or decrease. So you come up with the formulas and you find out the value. Okay, the right value should be like this, but in right now the value is like this. So there is the opportunity to earn profit. Yes. So you bet the market, right? So we right now our focus is not how to calculate this point zero eight, how they come up with the value that it will decrease 0 0.08. Our discussion is what if their expectations are true? The, the PISO does decrease to 0 0.08, right? But how they find out there are bigger calculations, forecasting, you know, a lot of stuff, regression analysis, and, you know, a lot of stuff here, financial engineering. So don't worry about that. Some of them we will be learning in our coming lectures, but Right now, we are learning that we can use future and forward contract for speculation, for hedging purposes as well. Right, Florian? 
Florian, you understand? Yes, I understand. Yes. Okay, good, 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 good. Okay, now the future market efficiency. So what does it mean by efficiency? So if the markets are efficient, the future prices should reflect all the available information, right? So in the future, there is, uh, in the future market, in, 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 in future currency exchange, everything is like written down, okay? You can see that 30 days, dollar future would be like this, Canadian future would be like this, right? So in that, for example, 30 rate future, Australian dollar would be 0.5 dollar over Australian dollar, uh, Canadian dollar gonna be 0.5 point, come on, sorry guys, it's just canceled, let me. Here, so for example, 30 days future of Australian dollar is 0.53 dollar over Australian dollar. Future, 30 days future for Canadian dollar is 0 0.50 Canadian, uh, dollar over Canadian dollar. So they already given the pound, the euro and all the stuff. So if the market is efficient, so what does it mean? It means this value, for 30 days, include all the events that are going to happen in these 30 days. It means nobody has, nobody has a superior information. For example, you know that, you know, there's gonna be a depression that coming out or there's a wildfire in Australia, which can cause uh, the supply, disrupt the supply positions. Uh, you know, um, if you are importing coal or lumber from Australia, government may restrict because a land is just a lot of I know a vast land is just burnt out so they do they, they don't allow the uh, you know um, people to cut the trees further so supply is going to be disrupted right so all the information that is available is including here in the predictions so there are uh, two types of, you know, uh, uh, you, uh, you can say uh, two types of analysis. One is the market analysis. The market says the Australian dollar would be traded after 30 days at 0.53. And one is your own analysis. You have different, you know, models, different calculations. You find out that according to you, the value is also 0.53. So you different, you know, mathematical models. It means market is efficient because your analysis and the end of market analysis is the same. It means you don't have any superior information that market doesn't know, right? You, you don't have the inside information that the market is going, you know, going to react or something. Market has already know. So we say that, okay, market is efficient. So thus the continual use of a particular strategy to take position in currency future should not lead to abnormal profits. So only 